Namaste and hello. Today we are going to continue with the series on radial artery forearm flap. So we will first discuss frequently asked questions that come during Viva as well and these will also help us get information on how the flap marking is done. So first of all, between which two structures does the radial artery or the pedicle lie? So it lies between the flexor carpi radialis and the brachioradialis which is in the mid and distal part of the forearm. Now between which muscle does the radial artery run along its course or where does the septum lie? So it lies under the brachioradialis. So all along the length of the forearm we will see that once we retract the brachioradialis, the radial artery that is the pedicle of this flap along with this vena comitans runs below the brachioradialis. Now venous drainage of this flap is by the vena comitans yes which go along the length of the radial artery and this is forms the deeper part of the venous drainage but the superficial part which is considered to be one of the more important components of venous drainage is the cephalic vein or known as the cephalic vein this vein is harvested in almost all the cases because it helps to increase or supplement the venous drainage of this flap because sometimes the vena comitans may not be sufficient. However, on the flip side, if the patient has been pricked multiple times for inserting a venous catheter or for taking blood samples, then in those cases this cephalic vein might be injured. Hence, a good pre-op assessment of the same is required. Now the important structure which must be preserved at all costs during the harvest of the radial artery forearm flap is the SBRN that is the superficial branch of the radial nerve. Now all along the course of this flap we will see that the cephalic vein is going to be radial to the radial artery. So it is going to be the radial most structure and in between them you will find the superficial branch of the radial nerve which can be preserved. If it is injured, it will lead to a very painful neuroma at the distal part of the harvest of the flap, which is closer to the wrist crease. Most of the branches as well as the major part of the nerve is preserved. However, sometimes a single branch or small branches with supply sensation to the dorsal part of the first metacarpal is usually lost. So sensation in this region will usually be affected as the branch to this part will be divided initially but this will not lead to a painful neuroma and it can also recover in the long run. Now the flap harvest of a radial artery forearm flap is it suprafacial or is it subfacial? In the earlier times it was almost always subfacial but this led to exposure of the tendons distally and damage to the parotenone as well which led to a loss of the split skin graft that is applied at the donor site. Hence now in most of the cases the harvest of the radial forearm flap is done suprafacially that is above the fascia so distally you will maintain the fascia over the tendons hence maintaining the integrity of the parotenones as well and as you go more proximal once you've reached the pedicle because you want to harvest the septum from where the perforators are arising, you will go subfacial. Another condition in which you must harvest it subfacially is for phalloplasty, that is for penile reconstruction, because this helps to add more bulk to the radial artery forearm flap. In which cases is the radial artery forearm flap most commonly preferred? It is used very widely for reconstruction in cases of oral cancer such as for the mucosa that is for the buccal mucosa. It is also used for phalloplasty in penile reconstructions. It is used for reconstruction of the region of the pharynx and it can also be used for osteoplastic reconstruction and in limbs as well. For the variations of radial artery forearm flap, a palmaris longus sling can be harvested along with the radial artery forearm flap which can be used in oral reconstruction to help maintain the integrity of the angle of the mouth that is the oral commissure to prevent drooping and hence maintain the continence. But again palmaris longus may not be present in all patients and we must do a test to see if the palmaris longus is present or not. 
Now the radius that is the bone can be harvested in a vascularized fashion for reconstruction as well. It can also be taken in a pedicled form for osteoplastic reconstruction. Remember the whole length and the whole circumference of the radius will not be harvested because it will lead to loss of integrity of the forearm. But you can take up to one third of the circumference and half the length of the radius in case you need to do an osteoplastic reconstruction. So this is about the landmarks of the harvest and the variations that are used in case of radial artery forearm flap and in the next video we will see the flap markings.